Emery Thurring down low. Addy Justin. Takes two shots. Errol Bowles Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, you are watching Arrow TV, the best high school broadcast brought to you by high school students and community members. We're glad you're with us on this cold and chilly evening in the Watertown Civic Arena. It's warm inside. We've got both teams on the court warming up. The Arrows just headed off to the locker room talk with Coach Rohde. The Brandon Valley Lynx, they are on the court continuing their warm up. I'll be joined later this evening by Lynn Langrock, who will give us some uh, analysis, a little color on the side. We'll be happy to have him join us here as well. But on the court, we have an ESD conference game tonight. Again, be between the Brandon Valley Lynx and the Watertown Arrows. Both teams come into the night with, a, with two and three records. Let's first talk about the Lynx that are Brandon Valley. The Lynx are coached by Mike Zur and assisted by Maggie Dady, Jeff Lochner, and Keddie Paula. Coach Zur is in his fifth year at the helm of the Lynx and has an overall record of 64 and 31. He's had a nice uh, run there in the Lynx, and I think, you know, they've got a young team this year. We're going to talk about them, but they are, he, he's not done having a nice run. He's got a nice young team, and we'll see them here tonight. Last season, the Lynx went 15 and 6 on the year, but uh, they were upset. If I remember correctly, they were upset by the Mitchell Colonels in their Sodak 16 game, and they did miss the 2023 AA State Tournament. So the last time the Lynx were at the South Dakota AA State Tournament was in 2022. The Lynx do look to return this year. And they return three seniors that are, they're looking to help them get back to that big dance, which is the AA State Tournament. They are Kennedy Deckert, Mallory Babb, and Paisley Hoff. You know, when we talk about the recent Brandon Valley Lynx, actually it's gonna, she's gonna go down in lore. She's gonna go down as a legend for the Lynx, and that is Hillary Behrens. She owns the all-time record uh, for the le scoring record for the Lynx. She has just had a phenomenal prep season. She's the three-time AA All-State player. Uh, she's a 20, well, she was the 2023 AA Player of the Year in South Dakota. She is uh, gone to graduation, but she took her game to the Jackrabbits of South Dakota State. So that is a big you know, loss due to graduation for the Lynx. In fact, uh, kind of an interesting story. Last year, I was at the game down in Brandon Valley when the Watertown Arrows faced off against them and uh, Hillary Behrens was just having a phenomenal night, uh, which she did against a lot of teams. And for the first time I saw, you know, Coach Rohde pull something out of his hat and took two girls, double teamed her no matter where she was at on the court. And uh, Brandon Valley likewise just had her go and stand by that center circle, you know, out by that uh, the, the tenth, or the uh, timeline half court. And you know, it, they played four four on three, and, and uh, it, they did everything they could, the Arrows do, to slow down Barons, but it was not enough. And, of course, Brandon did defeat the Watertown Arrows last year. Down there at home this year, the Lynx come and visit uh, the Civic Arena. Also lost to graduation last year was a fellow starter in Jada Metzger. So that is uh, someone that's being replaced, but really only two players, you know, being replaced in that starting lineup for the Lynx. In the early going here in this 2023-24 season, the Lynx are led by standout sophomore, five foot seven guard, Olivia Paget. Paget is averaging a team high 11.4 points per game, 3.4 steals per game, and 3.6 rebounds per game. You know, Coach Zier gave us a glimpse of Paget, and, and she, he says, hey, she is a tireless worker. Everybody sees her talent on the floor when they come and they watch them compete, watch her compete uh, against other teams. And But what they don't see is the effort that she puts in when nobody's watching. 
and it's the outside work and <laughs> what he says is it's impressive. So that is, you know, in, in my opinion, what we don't see. We know these young ladies that are talented out here, but it does, they have to work and, you know, in the practice, in the off season, and that is quite the, the quote for Coach Zier for Paget. You know, also talking uh, about the Lynx, they have another good one. Uh, she wears number three for the Lynx in Kennedy Deckert. She's probably the Lynx's most experienced player. She can shoot and shoot the ball very well. She is uh, committed to Northern State University up in Aberdeen. Coach, uh, you know, her, her dad, uh, Coach Brent, he, he coached in Brandon Valley for 20 years. So she's got the, she's a coach's daughter. She plays the game the right way. And in some ways, you know, she's underrated too in, as a passer and a defender. Everybody knows that she's the shooter, but they have to look at uh, and be aware of her in passing for those assists. And, you know, if I look at her assists record, she or uh, assists right now, um, I'm not sure that I have it, but the Lynx do, you know, average 11.2 assists per game. So she's a good one there as well. Number 24, Paisley Hoff. She is the vocal and team leader for the Lynx. She does a lot of things that uh, don't show up in the score sheet, but certainly do when that column goes in the W for the Lynx. Ava Kellenberger, a defensive, uh, she, she's really good as a, 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 on defense, and her game is growing on that offensive side as well. She uh, did lead them in scoring against Jefferson. She's an athletic, uh, younger girl. She's smaller guard, but just tough as nails. Number five, Maddie Giever. She is uh, playing hard in the paint. She's uh, six stands at six foot one inch. She's a junior forward, and she she's given them some tough tough minutes down there, working hard, and uh, is improving on both ends of the court, both defensively and offensively. And then Gracie Salter, a sophomore, number forty. She's a multi-sport athlete. If you uh, listen to us here on Aero TV, you do know that we appreciate the multi-sport athlete. That is uh, something that we. We enjoy to watch these uh, athletes, uh, these talented young ladies and men uh, play multiple sports. And Gracie Salter is one of those. She's a soccer goalie for the Lynx in the fall. She uh, is t one, of, you know, one of the best rebounders for the Lynx. So, you know, it's, we're looking for some of them. The seniors for the Lynx, they have set the tone as the leaders and they understand their roles of the team. You know, Deckert, Hoff, Bab. Uh, they do what needs to get done, and you know, they might not get the stats, but they're showing uh, what happens there. So we're we're happy that you are watching tonight. We're happy that you're listening to us here on Aero TV. Our uh, friends down at in Brandon Valley, we appreciate that, and I know the Watertown Aero boys are down there playing tonight. We're going to turn it over to Mark Bellum the public address announcer here at the Watertown Civic Arena for our national anthem, which actually, uh, I believe the band, the Watertown band is in at the Civic Arena tonight. So we're gonna hear the Watertown, the spirit of Watertown band led by band director, Austin Fordham. The anthem will be played by the Watertown High School band. The band is under the direction of Austin Fordham.
First, let's meet our Arrow cheerleaders, Natalie Benson, Annabelle Brendan, Kendra Buholz, Brooklyn Dahl, Shane Hoffman, Lauren Keller, Mackenzie Lewis, Kaylin Nordquist, Cameron Nordquist, Alexis Olson, and Adrian Schultz. Cheerleading advisor is Mallory Hoffman. And now your starting lineups first for the visiting Brandon Valley Lynx. Number two, a five-seven sophomore guard, Ava Kellenberger. Number three is a five-six senior guard, Kennedy Decker. Number five is a 6'1 junior forward, Madison Gieber. Number 24, a 5'7 senior forward, Paisley Hoff. And number 32, a 5'7 sophomore guard, Olivia Padgett. Assistant coaches, Maggie Dee, Jeff Lochner, and Kenny Paula. Head coach of the Lynx, Mike Zur. And welcome back to the Watertown Civic Arena. Cam Corey here with Lynn Langrock. We've got the call for you on Arrow TV. We've met the starters for Brandon Valley and Kellenberger, Decker, Gieber, Hoff, and Padgett. They'll be countered by the Arrows. Emery Thurley was going to jump. Avery Munger, Jade Lund, Miranda Falconer, and Addie Johnston. The tip is controlled by the Lynx. What kind of game we're expecting here tonight, Cam, out of Brandon? Well, the, Brandon's got a experienced lineup. I mean, Kennedy Decker, she's an NSU commit number three. She is uh, can shoot the ball from anywhere. She's she's probably their best shooter. But Olivia Padgett, the all ESD, all Metro player for the Lynx, and she wears number 32. She is just a phenomenal quick guard. She's getting offers from different colleges. They're the, you know, the Lynx, if you look up and down on paper, we're going to have uh, the Lynx a little bit taller, but they're, they're an athletic group. They're a quick group as well. They're guard heavy, you know, coming out here in this zone. You know, one of the things that they've seen probably on tape, the Arrows have struggled shooting from that outside area in, in every game except for one. Fast break, nice left hand there by Olivia Padgett. She does miss that layup. Outside shot's going to be touch the cable, so the Arrows will take possession. Miranda Faulkner will inbound this to Addie Johnson. We're seeing a full court press here by the Lynx. Gets it over to Jade Lund. Now to Thurry. 10 seconds. We've got two seconds remaining. Thurry gets it across that 10 second line. Jade Lund drives in. She's the right-handed floater. And it's going to go in for two.
turnover here by the Brandon Valley Lakes. Again, come out in that full court press. Paget running that point on the defense. Avery Munger with the right hand dribble. She's going to go in, and Giever does stop her drive, but a cutting three, and she misses the layup. The Lynx are going to push it right back. Number two of Kellenberger beats the arrows down low, but misses the layup. Rebounded by the Brandon Valley Lynx of Giger, and she misses the high percentage shot. The arrows are pushing it right back up the court. And a foul is going to be called on number 32, Olivia Paget. Miranda Falconer was uh, really tied up there, double team. She kind of, they kind of bailed her out, didn't they, Lynn? A little bit, a little bit. They had her, they had her double teamed, and just stay with that double team. They probably would have been okay, but the reach in will. That'll get you. Will get you. So the teams are pretty well evenly matched. Both kind of guard heavy. They, they are. have a couple nice post players, so um, you know, get out and run a little bit. It's going to be a fun, should be a fun, entertaining should, basketball. Should game. be a fun uh, basketball I'm ESD conference battle. We always like to see those. Decker, around that point, she's guarded by Thurry. Kicked out to Kellenberger. Kellenberger drops the three-pointer. 3-2 Three in the early going of period number one. Falconer's going to get it across that 10-second line. And tries to see a cutting Thurry, but unfortunately for the arrows, Kellenberger was there for the steal. Foul is going to be called on number six. Or 14, excuse me, and that is Falconer. So she will have her first foul of the night. Deckard is going to be picked up by Johnston. Kellenberger shoots from that same spot, this time just off the rim. Neely Johnson seeing her first time in tonight. Curry dishes it out to Lund. Lund shoots. No good. Rebound by Padgett. Padgett's going to push this up. Kellenberger running the court. She goes with the left hand and is going to be fouled by Neely Johnson. Well, an early going. We're going to see, it looks like Brandon Valley is certainly willing to push the, push the tempo here a little bit. And Arrows are doing a nice job of getting back so far. And we saw that uh, last time we were here in the Watertown yeah. Civic Arena against Mitchell. Mitchell really tried pushing it up the court as well, and we're seeing the Lynx try and do the same thing. Watertown's maybe doing a little better job tonight. It's so far. I know it's early, but uh, now this last play, they kind of kind of got beat down the court a little bit. So see how this plays out. Hopefully they learn something from that Mitchell experience. Kellenberger goes two for two from the line. She's normally a 67% free throw shooter, so that was a nice uh, two for her. Drive goes in by Munger, nice left hand. Doesn't come down with it. Again, Kellenberger running the court. Falconer gets down there and tries to get in front of her. Good defense, no foul called, and Bucket does go in for Kellenberger. Falconer gonna push this up the court. Thurry to Munger, Munger right hand dribble. He's gonna bring it back out. Cross court. Thurry with the three. And rebound comes down by way of the Lynx. Paget misses the three. The arrow's going to push it right back up. So cold shooting here by both teams in the early going, period number one. Thurry with the shot. No good. Gets her own rebound. He's able to get it out to Falconer, who takes the three. No good. The arrows are shooting about 23% on the year from that spot. Jade Lund there for the rebound. Off the glass. That's Jade Lund's second bucket, I believe, on the night. Kellenberger goes to the opposite side. Three, and she is one for three tonight from that three-point land. Watertown's done a nice job of breaking that press so far. They've had a couple opportunities where they've had a three on two, a little two on one. Haven't quite converted yet, but uh, it's nice to see them get through that press early. Thurry again with the 10 footer. No good, gets her own rebound, goes up and gets the rebound and offensive board. That's something that Coach Kerr is not gonna be happy about for the Lynx.
Jade Lund comes down with that rebound. She's going to give it off to Neely Johnson. Neely gets it across that 10 second line. Gives it off to Faulkner, now to Thurry. Thurry over to Lund. Lund looks low, nothing going on. Does try to get it to Thurry, but Munger's there to pick it up. Goes up, no good. Rebound comes down by way of the Lynx, and it looks like a tie-up. Strong move by Munger in there. And just didn't get the bucket to go. Madison Giever. Getting some help from some teammates. She looks like she's walking it off there. See Madison Grimsrud in for the first time tonight for the Arrows. We also have some substitutions for Brandon Bally, and Brandon does play a very deep deep bench, as do the Arrows. And off of an arrow, so that will be maintained possession by Brandon Bally. Paisley Hoff, a 5'7 senior forward, going to inbound it. She is deep under there. Gets it into 14, which is Amanda Lee seeing her first action tonight. Rebound by Thurry. Gets it off to Johnston. Falconer tries to get in Thurry. Does thread the needle. Gets it into her. No good. Rebound by Kellenberger. Kellenberger is going to push it up the court. She's going to slow it down, get into a half-court offense. Gives it off to Mallory Babb, another senior. Over to Kellenberger. She stopped down low at the baseline. Looked like a travel, not called. Johnson pushing it up to Thurry. Johnson no good. Nice rebound down low by the 6-1 junior of Madison Grimsrud, but just stolen out of her hands. And Amanda Lee's right there. She was right there and just couldn't handle the ball. Handle but the pass. It's a nice pass, nice dish. Saw it right there in the lane. Would have been exactly what you're looking for. Does go off her fingertips. Out of bounds. Lynx will stay in a full court press. A little token pressure here. There. Kinsey Make Russell it work in. for it a little bit. Kinsey Russell in. Brandon staying in that zone defense. Watertown's been man to man tonight. Faulkner with the shot. Rebound comes down to the links and it's pushed up left hand dribble by number 40 of Gracie Salter she goes coast to coast and she's going to get the bucket and the foul Miranda Faulkner is going to be called I believe for her second foul tonight so Salter the 5'11 sophomore forward goes coast to coast and does draw the foul Or did they, oh, they must have called the a charge. The last call was a charge on, on I did Brandon not see Valley. that call, did you? I thought it was a block myself until I just, I saw that we have the ball and they don't have yeah. the point. So, yep. So number 40, Gracie Salter does not get the points and is called her, her first foul. Addie Johnston was kind of riding her a little bit. I thought the foul was on Johnston, but it was a more of a, uh, Miranda stood in there and took the charge. And we've got a foul on the arrows. Let's see who that foul is called on. Number 24 for the arrows. Jade Luck. Her first. Give and go, defended well by the arrows. 
Salter looking to go in against Grimsgrove. Dishes it out to Padgett. Padgett with the shot. Rebound by Johnston. Nice box out by Addie Johnston. Arrows uh, down only by one here. 7-6 in period number one. Uh, Arrows, you know, doing a nice job here against Brandon Valley, which, you know, on paper, you know, height advantage. They have uh, for sure, you know, two players that are uh, looking at going to college. One for sure committed. Arrows doing a nice job. They did, and they got down early. And they're down uh, by at least three or four, maybe five early. Had a couple nice buckets, got a couple offensive rebounds, and what a difference that makes. You can get those offensive rebounds and, and score off of those. Um, they didn't let the press rattle them. The turnovers haven't been bad. So, yeah, they're hanging in there right because of that. You know, both of these teams, the Watertown Arrows come into tonight shooting 58.4% from the floor. You know, the, the Lynx are at 37%, uh, you know, from the floor. So generally, you know, you look at the, the floor shooting, or excuse me, that's free throw shooting. 31.3% is field goal shooting for the Arrows, and uh, field goal is 37% for uh, the Lynx. So I would say, you know, maybe both teams, maybe the Arrows are a bit above that 31% uh, here in the early going. Brandon Valley, you know, I think shooting far below that 37%. Right. right. Showing the second quarter, Lynx holding a 7-6 lead. Brandon Valley with possession. Brandon Valley has had a few shots at the rim that have gone out. Uh, I guess credit that to the Watertown defense a little bit, challenging those shots down low. Salter going to the right hand, defended by Lund. Rebound down low, big rebound by Kennedy Decker. Oh, correction, Madison Giever. We're up here in the rafters. It's sometimes kind of hard to see the numbers on these uh, black uniforms up here in the rafters, so I apologize for that. Watertown had a decent look down there low. Uh, Could have maybe got it down to Munger. Would have been a little bit of a tricky pass. Probably okay to pull that out, but at the end, we turned it over. Mandalise gives off to Padgett. Padgett goes in the right-hand layup, and she gets it to go. 11-6. Two quick buckets now, Brandon. Now that's exactly what we arrows have to defend against. Not let this get out of hand here early. Steal by Salter on the full-court press. Lee shoots and This might gets be a good it. time for Cho Coach Orty to take a time. I think so. Yeah, I think you're right. Coach, or uh, Lee, is that baseline shot, and the arrows give up that shot 25% of the time. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm JD Young, and I play for the Arrows from 2019 to 2023. I don't really have a specific favorite memory, but I'd have to say it would go from all the bus rides to making it to the state tournament, um, to all the relationships I created throughout my years, um, and building the culture. It's, Arrow basketball is truly one of a kind. Um, you're watching Arrow TV. Go Arrows! And welcome back to the Watertown Civic Arena. And a special thanks to Jada Young for joining us here on Aero TV. Jada, who we just saw, she is playing basketball down at Dakota Wesleyan University in Mitchell. And, you know, speaking of uh, former Aero alumni, we have two just sitting off to the right uh, over here, former standout athletes for the Arrows, and Maggie Hess. She is now playing, uh, actually went and... Uh, as a thrower down at USD and then ended up playing some volleyball and now she's at Midland throwing and then sitting next to Olivia Corey who plays volleyball for the Briar Cliff uh, University down in Sioux City. So they are on college break here back to support their high school. Jade Lund, top of the key, gets off to Miranda Faulkner over to Johnston. She's looking low. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Jade Lund, left-hand dribble over to Falconers. Trying to work it in. Thurry shoots, and she gets it to go. Emery Thurry has had that 8 to 10-foot jumper several times tonight. 
Um, hasn't had much success yet, but it's open, and they keep getting a tour. And uh, once they'll start falling, we're going to be a much better side. There we go. Looks down low. The arrows close it up. Now the arrows playing the zone. Mirror steal by Johnston. Salter with a pull through. No good on the shot. Padgett shoots. No good. Rebound. Down low. They're working hard down there, both teams, for those rebounds. And Paisley Hoff, I think, is the... Was she the one that ended up getting that rebound? Foul called on number 24, which is Jade Lund. She's a 5'8 senior forward for the Arrows. She averages 5.4 points a game, and she has uh, got a couple of buckets here in this game. Nice drive. Rebound by Giever, and she puts it right back up. 15-8, quarter number two, full court press. And not a pass that's going to be very successful there. Steal and bucket for the Brandon Valley Lynx. So we've seen uh, a little different uh, momentum shift here in quarter number two, Lynn. Indeed, and it's it's the offensive rebound for Brandon Valley. They've been, they've been getting too many, and they've been get, getting buckets off a little bit. It comes down to rebounding, box it out and rebounding, right? I mean, you can't let those second chance points. They will come back to, to haunt you all night long. And, and then we just saw maybe the turnover on the press get to us a little bit. So, you know, the it can compound itself pretty quick in those situations for they, sure. They, they can. And, and Gracie Salter, she's working hard, number 40 for the Lynx. She averages 6.6 .6 rebounds per game. And, you know, we've seen Avery uh, Munger battling against her, Madison Grimsrud, Neely Johnson uh, battling against her. And they did well in, in quarter number one. And uh, right now, she is just kind of muscling her way down there in that paint. But the fits uh, have, they've given the fits to uh, the arrows on that full court, but they get it across this time. Neely Johnson shoots. Bullseye! Neely Johnson! Neely Johnson, by the way, is shooting the three-point at 41.7%, which is a phenomenal percentage. Uh, so far on the year. When she gets that open look, she needs to shoot that ball. Steal by Thurry. Tried to get it down low. Miranda Falconer on the run. She goes up the right hand and gets that to drop. So a little momentum shift here for the Arrows. Nice little quick five-point run. Break that press a couple times that way. That might get Brandon thinking twice about Maybe resort back to a little token pressure instead of the full court as well. Nice rebound by Thurry. She's going to go right hand and push this up the court to Falconer. There's Avery Munger that nice is cutting, but travel is called uh, by Falconer. She got a little little bit excited seeing Munger going down the lane. Nice to see Munger running the court like that. Yeah, that was uh, agreed. That will pay dividends with that uh, as the game and the season goes on. Yeah, Brando's feet just got a little one extra step in there. Deep shot is up, no good. Rebound by Kellenberger. She goes with the reverse layup, no good. Curry comes down with the rebound. Johnson sees Falconer down low. Falconer's going to bring it back out. Thought maybe that was a little bit late. She gets it in there. Johnson shoots. No good. Brought down by Kennedy Decker at the NSU commit. Probably a little quick on that one for Neely. Just take an extra half a second. She had time. Square that up a little bit. Don't rush it. Decker with the right hand. Goes down low. Tries to feed Madison Giever. And it goes out of bounds. So that'll be a turnover for the Lynx. Certainly the arrows have turned up since that last time out. The intensity has gotten a lot better. Whatever Coach Odie said in the, in the timeout must have worked because they're playing, again, like they kind of did that first quarter, and it's making making a big difference here. Addie Hunsed, a 5'7 junior guardian for the Lynx. Steal by the Lynx of uh, Olivia Padgett. She gets it to go in, and Gracie Salter also back into the game for the Lynx. The arrows get it across to Munger. 
Munger picks up the dribble, tries to go to Falconer, and that is going to be a steal by Salter. Turnover on the arrows. Salter brings it right back. Nice play, nice uh, vision, court awareness, and they get it down to Salter. Salter goes into the layup. Turnover on the pass by Johnston. And the foul is going to be called there. That's going to send Ava Kellenberger to the line. Ava Kellenberger is uh, two for two on the, from the line today. She's a 67% free throw shooter, 5'7 sophomore guard. She's got seven points here tonight. Nice first half so far. She adds another one to that. Not a lot of spin on that ball, but the net result was all right. You know, the, the last sequence here, we just talked about how the arrows ran off five quick points. They were doing good. Three quick turnovers leads to five, now possibly six great points for Brandon. And she goes two for two there, so she's four for four from the free throw line tonight. Jade Lund back in for the arrows. Neely Johnson going to take a break. 32 Johnston, and it's going to be called off of the link, so the arrows will maintain possession. Three's going to inbound this. The full court press is on. Kellenberger right there as well as Paget. They do get it in. Now we're seeing Emma Hendricks in for the first time tonight. And Emma pass it, turnover. The arrows take get a break there. And travel is called on the arrows. The arrows, you know, average so far 20.2 turnovers a game versus, you know, Brandon Valley at 15.6 turnovers a game. So it, an area that I know Coach Rohde is really stressing during practice and, and cutting down, but playing, you know, play, make smart decisions, but play free. And, you know, Sometimes we see that uh, by the arrows in, in those uh, glimpses, but other times they just get a little too quick and make uncharacteristic mistakes. Shots up by Addie Johnston. Well, it's a nice, that's, that shot by Addie's a nice break in that streak, like you were just saying, the turnovers. The first quarter was pretty good. Arrows just had five turnovers, five straight possessions, no shot. Uh, hard to keep in ball games doing that, so. Good, good to see Addie make a shot here and break that streak a little bit. See if we can close out this second quarter a little bit better than the last couple minutes. Thurry, good seal by Munger. Thurry sees it, goes in, and she's going to be fouled on the shot. And that was developed because of Munger. Absolutely. Munger, you know, sealed off, gave her a lane, and a smart play by Avery Munger of the Arrows. She wasn't so much calling for the ball. She had the seal down. And Emery recognized it and, and went in, and, and here we are at the line. So nice two free points. And that foul was called on, I believe, number 14 for the Lynx. That's Amanda Lease, 5'7", junior guard. Jade Lund going to take a break. Miranda Faulkner back in the game. 23-16, quarter number two. Paget with the drive, she dishes out, gives it to Kellenberger. Kellenberger shoots, no good. Avery Munger with the rebound. Outlet to Thurry. Thurry's gonna go coast to coast. Steal, nearer steal by Amanda Lease, but she was out of bounds, unable to control it. So the arrows will maintain possession. Coming into the game is Kennedy Deckert. She'll check in for Ava Kellenberger. Hattie Hunsett also on the court for the Lynx. Turnover for the Arrows. That's going to send Hunset in for the left-hand layup, and she gets it to go. Arrows looking to get some momentum here in the bottom end of quarter number two. One minute to go. Turnover. And the Lynx go... Feed it down low to Gracie Salter. Salter goes in and gets the bucket and gonna go to the line. Good replay by our crew there with that right hand under, underhand layup. 
Gracie Salter shoots and no good. Mung offensive rebound by the Lynx. Shots up, no good. Thurry comes down with that rebound. Thurry is uh, hitting the boards uh, pretty well tonight. She does average nine rebounds uh, a game. She nearly averages a double-double. Shooting to the arrow, senior Addie Johnson. You know, things look good starting out in that first quarter. We keep talking about turnovers, but it's certainly been a key here in this second half of this second quarter. Unfortunately, Watertown is now Gamer probably approaching their, their uh, game average for the first half, and uh, the difference is in the scoreboard. Addie Johnson is a 70% free throw shooter. She misses her first one, but does get her second one to go. 29 seconds, shot clock is off. The Lynx looking to hold for one shot. Paget now picked up by Emma Hendricks. Now to Hoff, over to 12 of Hunsett. Hunsett shoots and gets the three. Three seconds left. Johnson will give it a heave. No good. So at the half, the Brandon Valley Lynx lead of the Watertown Arrows, 32-17. We have a uh, fun game for our listeners. If you're listening and watching, get out uh, a secondary device, not the device that you're watching here on Aero TV, but get out a secondary device and uh, play this game called Kahoot. We've got some questions for you, and some of these questions are good, and it's going to take us back down memory lane for not only the Watertown Aero fans, but the Brandon Valley Aero fans as well. So go to Kahoot, those of you online, on a secondary device, put in the ID number of 524-657. Again, 524-657. You can play along with us on Kahoot. You can watch the Watertown dance team wearing their pink and black tonight. And let's have a little fun.
All right, about 30 seconds, and we will start the game Kahoot. So if you are in listening land on Aero TV, go into Kahoot. You still have time. Put in that game pin of 524657 and join the fun. We have about 62 going up, going up uh, players. So that's uh, exciting. The more players, the better. This is the first time we're doing Kahoot live on Aero TV. Do we need 100 to start the game, Cam, or are we, we good with what we get? Well, we're working on 100. I think that's well, what they're waiting for. Not that we need a few more. All right, three, two, one. It must be 100. It must be 100. Here we go. Which team did Watertown beat in the 2009 Girls Basketball State Tournament? You know that one, Lynn? I don't. Brandon Valley. Which former Brandon Valley player was selected the class AA All-State team three consecutive years between 2021 and 2023? If you were listening to my pregame, you know this answer. Hillary Barons now playing for the Jackrabbits down there in Brookings. The first South Dakota High School Girls State Basketball Tournament was held in which year? I was there. You were there? I was. As a student body of uh, just, Castlewood just a, just a or fan. Just, just a, a fan. fan? Okay. 1975. You just dated yourself. A little bit. At what university did Brandon Valley head girls basketball coach Mike Zier play for? Northern State University. Watertown girls basketball coach Chad Rohde previously spent four seasons as head boys basketball coach at what school? And again, if you listen to Aero TV, you know this answer. It might be halfway to Brookings. It might be halfway to Brookings. Maybe. Watertown won its first girls basketball state championship in 1976. Which team did the Arrows beat in that title game? Oh, they said Brandon Bell. That would be a good guess. We're playing Brandon tonight, so that would be a good guess. I actually. A little bit of a tricky question there. I actually didn't know that answer. In that 1976 season, Watertown and Brandon Valley each had a player named to the All-State first, uh, first team. Who was it? This is a tough one. This is a tough one. If you weren't around in that time or involved in basketball, you might not know this. Answers are a little slower All right. to pop in here. Pictures showing up. Pictures showing up. Chris Edwards and Susan Elisen. Susan Elison of Brandon Valley went on to average 21.7 points per game while playing at what college? Augustana, a lot of our uh, players knew that answer. A lot of our Brandon Valley folks listening are uh, spot on on these. Last one, Chris. We'll see Ed how they do on this one. All right, double points. Chris uh, Edwards of Watertown that. went on to become the career leader in assists and steals while playing for what college? She's the Hall of Famer for the Watertown Arrows. 
University of Nebraska, Omaha. Here we go, thank you for playing. That was fun, Inspired Octopus, you are our winner. If you are Inspired Octopus, go on to our live stream on YouTube. Let us know if you're from Watertown or if you are from, oh, Brave Coat, sorry, Brave Coat is the winner. Brave, Brave Goat. Brave Goat, if you're from Watertown, you're from Brandon Valley or anywhere in between, go on and just let us know on our YouTube channel, Aero TV. Let us know where you're listening from. And we appreciate you playing along with us here tonight. Lynn, what do you have for first half uh, stats? Well, pretty much kind of what we expected. Um, both teams shooting about their average. Brandon Valley shooting 35% from the floor. Uh, excuse me, 36%, Watertown at 35. So Brandon maybe a little less, Watertown a little more. Uh, the Achilles heel at this point for Watertown is the turnover right, and, and transition yeah. points for Brandon Valley. There's your uh, a good chunk of your 13 point lead for Brandon. So, there you, go. you know, free throws pretty even. Um, it's just a turnover battle in that uh, 12 to seven range, those extra five. It's a, it's a lot of points for Brandon Valley. So. All right, so the Arrows have some work to do in the second half, and they start with the ball. Munger, and she loses the handle on it, but it does go off of number 24 of Brandon Valley, which is Paisley Hoff. Deep toss into Thury. She is guarded by Kellenberger. Now gives it off to Faulkner. Faulkner with the left hand sees Thury. Thury dishes out to Lund. Lund with the shot. She's got it. Bullseye, Jade Lund. There's probably not a better three-point shot in basketball than what just happened right there in that sequence. Kick, ball goes in, kick it back out. It's a, it's a beautiful shot by that guard from the, from the, from the outside. Jade Lund with her seventh point here tonight. Dishes out to Padgett. Padgett now gives it off on that left wing. Kellenberger left hand. She sees the lane. No good, but the positioning down low by Madison Giever. And she gets the rebound, tries to go back up for it, and she is fouled. Brandon shooting 2 of 9 from the three-point line for 22%. Watertown 2 of 7 for a rate of 28%. Okay. Well, both schools with two makes from the three-point line. Uh, is it just me, or is it real quiet in the Civic Arena here tonight? Seems a little bit on the quiet side. It does seem a little quiet. Giever gets that one to go. She's a 64% free throw shooter. She stands at six foot one. The arrows get it across the 10-second line. Falconer. On the right wing, she shoots. No good, rebound by Thury. Now to that left wing to Jade Lund. Now back to Johnston. Johnston with the floater. No good, but Avery Munger's got position. Looked like she was fouled, not called. Rebound comes down to the Lynx. Number five of Giever, she dribbles it down. Now she gives it off and she's gonna go to that left perimeter. Drive goes in, no good. But the offensive rebound, nice positioning down low by Paisley Hoff. She averages 2.2 points per game, and she gets that one to go. Munger. Turnover for the Arrows. Transition again for the Lynx of 32. Olivia Paget gets that one to go off of the turnover of the Arrows. Jade Lund now. She shoots. No good, rebound by Thury. Out to Johnston, Johnston shoots. No good, yes, she gets the friendly roll of the Watertown Civic Arena and it drops and I think that was a three pointer. It was a three. Brandon Valley winning the, the offensive rebound battle eight to five. Uh, it seems like it's more than that. It does seem like it's more than that. So eight, eight to five offensive rebounds. Eight to five. And turnovers for both teams are, are what right now? Turnovers are uh, night, uh, seven for Brandon Valley and, and uh, 13 actually for Watertown now. Okay. So 
Watertown kind of on their average for turnovers, and I guess Brandon at 15 a game, they're they're right there, maybe a little better. Ava Kellenberger leading the Lynx right now on the court with uh, scoring with nine, followed right up by Olivia Padgett with eight. That would be a turnover, stepped on the line, and the ref is right there, sees that, makes the call. Arrow basketball, full court press by the Lynx. To Jade Lund, Jade Lund picks up her dribble. She's in a little bit of trouble. Gets it off to Johnston. Johnston now to Thurry. Thurry drives the lane. She goes up with a right hand, mini hook. No good. Lynx come right back. Paget left hand dribble, she dishes it out. Baseline drive, stopped by good backside help of Munger. They're gonna call a foul. I mean, Munger went over there, stopped that backside help, exactly what she needed to. I think she's gonna get get the foul here though. Did a little reach in there at the end. And she got caught, caught up in that, and just instead of keeping her position. Kinda did a little reach and, and they, they caught that one. <laughs> Brandon Valley does do a nice job of getting back, not letting Watertown transition like Watertown sometimes lets Brandon transition a little bit. Nice drive by Faulkner, it just does not go in. And battle for the rebound. It looks like uh, maybe Curry was touched the line. She not, did. Okay. Yeah, battling for the ball, she just rolled over to her left a little bit and, and the ball or her body went out of bounds. Kenzie Russell in for the Watertown Arrows. Madison Grimsrud also in for the Arrows. Salter down low. Eurostep does dish out to Deckert. Deckert shoots and stolen away there by Grimsrud, or stolen away from Grimsrud in for the two points. 37, right spot, right time. The ball just kind of popped in her hand and she was in there and easy basket. Uh, 10 second violation. So nice defense by the Brandon Valley Lynx. Number 22, Mallory Babb, a 5'5 senior guard returns back to the action. be inbounded by Hoff. Drives the lane, dishes off. Rebound fought by Russell and Babb, and that's going to be a jump ball. Possession will stay with the black of Brandon Valley. Off with the shot and fight for the rebound and we're gonna have another jump ball it looks like. This time the arrows will get possession. Jade Lund looks like she's gonna check back in and she's gonna check in for Addie Johnston. The Lynx come back out in that full court trap. Type defense, Kinsley, Russell, getting it to Falconer. They beat the uh, press that time. Nice shot by Jade Lund, gets the friendly roll on that home side. 37-25. Links on top. Watertown staying in that man-to-man -man defense, and I think that's why they've been in the whole night. Uh, they've... Oh, 
And foul is going to be called by Brandon Valley. That was a nice defensive stand there by Watertown. They, Brandon Valley didn't get a good look, and they used uh, really had to take a shot at the end of the shot clock with winding down, and they had to force something up. So good defensive uh, effort there, and uh, Watertown gets the ball back. So. Most of the day. Russell gets it across that 10 second line to Grimsrud. Grimsrud with the shot. She's got it to go. Maddie Grimsrud. Paget is guarded by Johnston. She gives it off now on that left wing to Lease. Arrows in his own defense. They'll work it down low. Now give it back out to Babb. Close steal by Johnston. Babb's going to take the shot. No good. Just over the top of Lund, and the rebound comes down by Giever. And off of Babb's hands, out of bounds. The Arrows will take possession. Curry's going to inbound this. And timeout called by the Brandon Valley Lynx. We're going to take it as well. We'll be back. I'm Miranda Faulkner. I'm a senior. I'm Addie Johnston. I'm a senior. Would you rather experience the world beginning or ending? Beginning. Okay. Would you rather have a unibrow or no eyebrows at all? Oh. No eyebrows at all. Um, are you a Swifty? I am a mega Swifty. Movies, rom-com or horror flick? Rom-com. Who's your celebrity crush? Paul Walker. You have to give up one for a week, your phone or showering? <gasps> My phone. What's the best animal noise you can make? <laughs> yeah. Be honest, are some babies just kind of ugly? Yeah. <laughs> um, what's your guilty And we're back at the Watertown Civic Arena. The arrows on the court with the ball. Jade Lund with the shot. Rebound by Lease. Steal by the arrows. Three. Ball on the right wing. Left hand dribble. A lot of dribbling. Looking for not a lot of movement right now by the arrows. They need to move. Russell in trouble. Jade goes and gets it. Now she picks up her dribble. And she's going to be fouled by Mallory Babb. I believe that's going to be Babb's first foul on the evening. And Deckert, Kennedy Deckert, a 5'6 senior guard, the NSU commit. She will come in and give Babb a breather. Lund off the front of the rim, rebound Thurry. Gets it out to Johnston. Johnston back over to Lund. Now Thurry. Thurry with the dribble. Johnston with the shot. Johnston off the front of the rim. Rebound by the Lynx. They're going to go coast to coast with Paget. Paget dishes off to Deckert. And the arrows get a hand in there, but it does go out of bounds off of the arrows. But good defense and way to get back for the Watertown arrows. Inbounded by Lease to Salter. Salter dribbling, looking low to Giever. Giever with the drive, and she goes right over. So 6-1 versus 6-1, and Giever wins that matchup over Madison Grimsrud. Steal by Salter, and Salter goes in with the right hand layup and gets it to go. The Arrows had this down to 10 at 37-27, and now the Lynx are back up on top, 41-28. Seven. That's I think the second time now Watertown has cut that lead down to ten, and they just can't quite, quite breach that that ten point barrier. And Brandon Valley makes a little push again. So, Thurry gets two point bucket. Emory Thurry has got seven on the board tonight. Links looking low. 
down to Salter. Salter is blocked that time by Grimsrud. So the 6-1 versus 6-1, and that time it is won by Madison Grimsrud of the Arrows. Thurry over to Johnston. Johnston going to slow things down. Jade Lund on the left perimeter. She's going to dribble with her right hand and give it over to Addie Johnston. 13 seconds remaining. Shot clock is off. Over to Johnston. Now Thurry. Eight seconds remaining. Jade Lund. Nothing going on. Got to give it to Johnston. She's got a good look. She's got no off of the rim. She had a good look. Good opportunity. Just off the rim. Brandon Rep Valley Lynx up 41-29. Three quarters in the books. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. I'm Jordan Remmers, and I'm a freshman. I'm Grace Corey. I'm a junior. Jordan, would you rather have a unibrow or no eyebrows at all? I'd rather have no eyebrows. Would you rather live in a mountain cabin with few people around or a mansion full of people? A cabin with no people around. Movies, rom-coms or horror flicks? Rom-coms. Are you a Swifty or not? Uh, probably not. Cats or dogs? Dogs. On a trip, do you have to plan everything or just wing it? Plan everything. You have to give one up for a week, your phone or showering. My phone. Who's your celebrity crush? Uh, Zac Efron. A night out, a fancy restaurant or pizza and a movie at home? Pizza and a movie at home. How do you feel about clowns? I don't like them. <laughs> and after quarter number three, Lynn, what do we what do we got for some stats after three? After well, after three, Watertown won the third quarter by one, uh, twelve to eleven. So they had a nice quarter. Um, so uh, some stats here: field goal percentage, thirty-seven percent for Brandon, thirty-four percent for Watertown. Very close. Uh, this, the three point, uh, two for 12 for Brandon, three for 12 for Watertown, uh, very similar. Uh, and the turnover battle's kind of evened up a little bit. It's gone from 11 for Watertown, or for Brandon, and 15 for Watertown, so not a huge difference there. Huh. I think the, the main thing there is Brandon has taken advantage of the turnovers and scored where Watertown so much has. So that's been a key difference. Water, uh, Brandon's press has certainly been a factor. Uh, and we see it right across. here again. Nice again. look down low. That's going to be a foul on Johnston. So you're right. You're you're seeing that uh, right here in the fourth quarter. That press is is still creating some fits. And even when Brandon doesn't generate the turnover off that press, their Watertown's taken a full eight to nine seconds to get it across, and it just it disrupts your whole offensive timing. And you don't have as much time to run your offense, so it's certainly affecting. Watertown, even when they do get it across, but been effective for Brandon. Ava Kellenberger back at the line. That's five for five tonight. Now she's going six for six from the line. So a really nice, nice uh, night for Kellenberger at the charity stripe. Falconer with the shot. She's got it. Falconer now with four points on the board. Arrows in a zone defense. Try to get down low. And they do to Kellenberger. Kellenberger kind of throws her body into Munger. And Munger's going to be called with the foul. That's going to send Kellenberger back to the line. Probably not the person that the Arrows want to the line tonight. She is, as we just mentioned, six for six. Seven for seven now on the night. Brandon oh. is winning the offensive rebound battle. Watertown is winning the defensive Watertown ba uh, rebound battle. Both teams both have 26 rebounds total. They're very, even there. All right, eight for eight for Kellenberger at the line. The arrows looking to cut this lead down. Make a run here in the fourth quarter. Munger dishes it out. She might have had a lane, but she dishes it out to Johnston. Johnston gives it back to Faulkner, and Faulkner drives and is fouled. And that foul is going to be called on Ava Kellenberger. That is her second foul. Arrow ball on the side. 
Gracie Salter back in the game for the Lynx. As is Addie Hunsed. Lund with the shot, no good. And that is going to be off of the arrows. So Lynx will gain possession. The arrows come out in a full court press. Not a... Kellenberger drives, dishes it off to that left wing. Shots up, no good. Rebound down, another offensive board for the Lynx. Good vision by Hunsad. Down low to Kellenberger, and she puts that one in. But that was set up by Hunsad. Timeout for the Arrows. Thurry gets down there, gets in a little trouble. Coach Rohde says timeout. You know, we couldn't do what we do here on Aero TV without uh, our supporters. We need to give a shout out to Dakota Land Federal Credit Union, a big supporter of Aero TV, Aero Athletics. In fact, uh, not only Aero Athletics, but athletics throughout uh, and student athletes throughout the Watertown Arrows. So big shout out to Dakota Land Federal Credit Union. Come to Sharp Automotive Group, where we're here to help you find the best deal in town. We have the largest truck inventory in Northeast South Dakota and the best selection of cars and SUVs too. You'll get the best price the first time and the best selection. So stop in today at Sharp Automotive Group. And special thanks to Sharp Chevrolet as well. They helped us out during the football season. And they got us down to T to uh, give a big battle against the T Titans, the Watertown Arrows in football. And they're a big supporter of uh, Aero TV and Aero Athletics as well. Couldn't do this without the supporters of you. So thank you very much. Back on the court for the Arrows is Miranda Faulkner on that right wing. She gives a left-hand dribble into the lane. She goes up and... Rebound by Salter. Salter's going to maintain possession. She'll inbound it. The arrows will come in with a token type press here. Kellenberger dishes out to the left perimeter. Now to the top of the key where Hunsed is. Hunsed goes down low. Beaver dishes it out, shots up, three is good. Kellenberger having a heck of a night. She averages 8.4 points per game. She's got 18 here tonight. 32 to Johnston. Johnston picks up her dribble, now over to Falconer. Shots up, no good, rebound by Giever. Giever, she gets it to that 10 second line, now she gives it off to Deckard, over to Hunsed. Hunsed to Giever, Giever looks low, sees Salter, Salter's gonna work on Thurry, goes up with a nice underhand layup, she gets two. The arrow's coming back quickly. Steal by Deckert. Brandon Valley just seems to be exerting their will here a little bit more in this fourth quarter now. You know, early on, it was the, uh, the offensive rebounds that led to those second chance points and the turnovers that led to fast break points. That was the difference in the game. Um, the last quarter here, things have kind of, Brandon Valley just taken over the, the balance of this contest. Neely Johnson in for the Arrows, as is Paisley Hoff. She comes in for the Lynx. Get across the 10 second line, two seconds to spare. 
Johnston in the half court offense, setting this up over to Jade Lund. Jade Lund, right hand dribble now to Faulkner over to the corner of Johnston. Johnston back to Faulkner. Faulkner looking for a screen. She gets it from Johnson. Faulkner shoots, no good. Rebound by Salter. Gracie Salter, 5'11 sophomore forward. She does a nice job with positioning, reading the ball. Do we know how many uh, rebounds Salter has tonight, Lynn? We do. Salter has a total of six rebounds. Six rebounds. Uh, three offense, three defense. And they're going to call the arrows for a foul. I believe they're going to call it. I thought maybe it was going to be Emery Thurry, but it. 20. So that is Neely Johnson called for her second foul. Nice high percentage shot by Salter. Salter in double digits now with 10 points. Brandon Valley and Coach Kerr has got four new subs to come into the game. Brandon Valley now shooting 41%. They've had a nice uh, late run here in the second half to increase that percentage. Water Boom down. for Jade Lund. And Watertown sitting at 34%. They've kind of maintained that. Both teams about 22% from the three. And off of uh, Brandon Valley, we're going to see Evie Hoff come in, number 34, a 5'11 junior forward. Brooke Burnett, number 44, a 5'8 junior forward for the Brandon Valley Lynx. You know, Addie Hunstead stays in for the Lynx. Uh, who else do we have? Number 20, I'm not sure. I don't have number 20 on my roster here for Brandon Valley. Reserves for Brandon Valley doing a nice job on the arrows. Shot up by Thurry, no good. Rebound by Jade Lund. You know, it, you look at the score, it's a 20 point lead for Brandon Valley. That played a nice game. When you look at the stats, it's uh, interesting how similar they, they are. Uh, There's not a huge disparity in any of the stats, but Brandon Valley is a little bit better in, in most, but it doesn't quite equate to that 20 point lead. So. Clearly, Brandon has taken advantage of those few miscues a little better, possibly, and that's where we have the difference in the score tonight. But it's been a fun contest, and these two teams play again down the road. It, it could be, I would imagine, a lot closer game, too. Well, and this is, uh, you know, first time back for, or first back from the Christmas vacation. Addie Hybert in a senior for the Watertown Arrows, as is Molly Hendricks, a junior. Drive. By number 34, Evie Hoff for Brandon Valley. Neely Johnson gives it off to Jade Lund. Number 30, a minute remaining. Molly over to Jade Lund. Jade's got it. Bullseye for Jade Lund. We're going to see a couple freshmen for the first time tonight in Jordan Remmers and Andy Olson. And uh, both of those two are freshmen, number 12, number 30. And number 10, Emma Hendricks is back on the court. Burnett, guarded by Hendricks. Burnett with the right hand dribble. She picks up her dribble, gives it over to Lease. Lease with the shot and no good. And the rebound by Andy Olson gives it off to Hybert. Hybert the right hand dribble and it is going to be out on number 20 for Brandon Valley and again I apologize I do not have number 20 for Brandon Valley on my roster
Olsen, Molly Hendricks. To Remmers, 18 seconds remaining. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Gives it off to Steele by Evie Hoff. Four seconds remaining, and they're going to just hold it out on that wing. And the Brandon Valley Lynx are going to defeat the Watertown Arrows 56 to 39 here tonight in the Watertown Civic Arena. We're going to take 60 seconds, and we'll be back with you with our post game show here on Arrow TV. I'm Kinsey Russell, I'm a sophomore. I'm Emma Hendricks and I'm a junior. Okay, okay. <laughs> Would you rather have an extra toe or an extra finger? Extra toe? <laughs> um, would you rather have the ability to be invisible or to read people's minds? Read people's minds. On a trip, do you have, do you have to plan everything or just wing it? <laughs> just wing it. Okay, um, okay movies. Rom-coms or horror flicks? <laughs> Probably horror. <laughs> Um, how do you feel about clowns? <laughs> They're pretty scary. <laughs> okay, cats or dogs? Oh, definitely dogs. Okay. okay. Um, what's the biggest animal, or what's the best animal sound you can make? Oh gosh. Probably a dog. Wanna demonstrate? Ruff, <laughs> ruff. <laughs> okay, you have, to, <laughs> you have to give up one per week. Your phone or showering? My phone. <laughs> um, what are you really bad at? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Come to Sharp Automotive Group, where we're here to help you find the best deal in town. We have the largest truck inventory in Northeast South Dakota and the best selection of cars and SUVs too. You'll get the best price the first time and the best selection. So stop in today at Sharp Automotive Group. And welcome back to the Watertown Civic Arena where we have Brandon Valley defeating the Watertown Arrows 56-39 here in the Watertown Civic Arena. But uh, if we take a glimpse at the Watertown Arrow boys, they are up right now on the Brandon Valley Lynx 51 to 46 with 256 remaining down there in Brandon. Lynn, what do you, uh, what's the tale of tape tell us? What do the stats tell us and how this game ended up? I think the best way to sum it up is Brandon was just a little bit better in virtually every category, which led to the victory. You know, they, the stats are overall pretty close. In the end, Brandon shot the ball a little you know, a better, 40% to 35%. You know, not a huge difference. Uh, Watertown shot from three-point range, 31 versus 21% to Brandon. But, you know, Brandon Valley won the turnover battle. Uh, I would say both teams were better than their season average, so it's always good to see basketball getting better. It's what you want uh, to see, as, especially as a coach. But Brandon Valley wins it, uh, that battle. Brandon Valley wins the rebound battle uh, by a little, a narrow margin. So. You know, they just won a little bit in several categories that's resulted in the win. So our high scorer tonight, a uh, game high, I believe, is going to be Ava Kellenberger with, uh, what did she finish up with, 18 tonight? I believe that was the final, yes. Yeah, who are other uh, double, or, or why don't you give us our, our score leaders or scorers for? Yeah, Kellenberger with 18, nice game for her. Uh, Padgett and Salter both with 10, so three players in double digits. And then we have uh, Lise with two. Um, and Giever with nine. So that, uh, Hunsed with five, and Hoff with two. That looks like that rounds out Brandon scoring. So three players in double figures. The fourth with, uh, had nine points. So a nice uh, balance to their offensive attack. And, you know, they had they the one player who more than doubled her, her, uh, her season average. So one player can step up at any time. Watertown total points uh, led by Lund with 15. She had a nice game. She hit some threes. And then uh, pretty balanced after that. Uh, Thurry had nine. 
Johnston with six, Falconer with four, Johnson with three, she hit that three early, and then uh, Grimsrud had two to round out Watertown score. All right, very good. There you have it from the uh, stats here in the Watertown Civic Arena. We couldn't put on our uh, program here tonight uh, without our I, uh, crack up staff. I tell you, we've got a good one here. We uh, had on our floor cameras, I saw Jonathan McCorkle, Mason Mogg, Austin Wellnitz, Kyle Gall. We had Austin Thompson, Ryan Remmers. I tell you what, they do a, a, a really good job and uh, you know, putting on the replays, putting on our courtside cameras, our main cameras following uh, with our, our graphics and just a phenomenal job by those uh, student athletes. Uh, we, uh, you know, they are you know, students first, they're athletes, they are technical savvy, they are just phenomenal young men and women that we have here behind the scenes on Arrow TV. Hey, we're gonna be back with you on our next broadcast. And I think uh, we'll have a graphic coming up of when that is in just a moment. Should be the boys game this coming Friday against Sioux Falls O'Gorman. And that call will be brought to you by Sam Mooney. So please stay with us. But hey, we have also just a, a shout out. If you go on to our YouTube channel, Arrow TV, you can see some classics. There's some new classic information from the 90s uh, uh, out there for the Arrows. And hey, take a gander. Go look at that. Ryan Remmers has spent some time going through old footage, putting together some uh, great highlights, some good footage. Spend some time. Go look at that. If you're new to Arrow TV, uh, go on to that YouTube channel push subscribe and follow along with us so you don't miss anything we put on uh, all both boy uh, men and women's basketball we have wrestling we have gymnastics uh, of course the football volleyball in the spring and we have you know cheer dance the dance team here tonight so follow along with us uh, we show the arts we had the band concert here over over uh, the Christmas holiday as well so we appreciate all the support uh, that you give us. We do this for the educational entertainment benefit for you and for our students uh, here in Watertown and abroad. Any uh, last thoughts, Lynn? I just, uh, yeah, thank you uh, all our viewers for tuning in and uh, hope you enjoyed the broadcast and it's a pleasure to bring it to people who can't attend the game. All right, drive safe uh, home, everyone. And as we do each and every time here on Arrow TV, we want to remind you that an arrow can only be shot by pulling it backward. So when life is dragging you back with difficulties, it means it's going to launch you into something great. So just focus and keep aiming. Good evening.